Welcome back to the 12D Trainers videos. Today we're going to be looking at the Project Details panel. This is one of the panels that starts up when you start a new project of 12D. It gives you some options in there to set some project attributes or details for the project. These can then be used in various different ways within 12D. Most notably people use them for the plotting, plotting for their title sheets. Or you can also use these project attributes essentially to be placed on your digital engineering model further on down the line. We can move these attributes around and place them on other 12D objects like the trimeshes, tins, and strings, which then can be then passed, that information can then be passed on to other 12D users. So as I said, this panel does come up standard with 12D when you open it up. And this video is essentially going to be going through how you can customize it to your company's title block if, you, if that's what you want to use it for. But you might also just want to be able to turn the panel off so you no longer see it anymore. So I'll also show you how to do that. So let's get into it and have a look at it. As I said, the project details panel, as it starts up on a new project, it usually starts in this location. And the first thing you might be thinking is actually it's too small. So we have run through this before. Obviously, you can expand the list out here come up to the little 12D icon and make that the new default. Essentially by setting that as the new default file, the DDX, you'd want to save that into your user directory. And then therefore, whenever a new project opens, it would start up with that size in mind so that that way you can actually get all the attributes or the details you want. So that's quite easy. And we have, a, have covered the DDX files before or the dialog default files before in other videos. So I won't go into that. If you wanted to turn off the panel so that it just never comes up whenever you see it again, whenever you create a brand new 12D project, I think if we go on into the pro in, into the video, you'll see that there, it is a really good reason to keep these project details. But if you just want to get rid of it, the way to do that is to go into project management and actually edit some of the environment dot four defaults or the, or the 12D environments here. So under the environment file, under project and details there's a couple of options here where we can show the project details so you can see it's turned on which is why it comes up automatically so i'd want to turn that one off you validate it and we're going to talk about the validation of the project details when we get into editing the project details so we can turn that one off or if you wanted to use a different project details file name rather than the standard one that is used now again we don't actually like to to mess around with the environment files too much or the environment.4d files shipped with 12d I'd rather people go through the project management and the environment configuration and change their configuration if you want and I'll put these up in the 12d wiki page also but these are essentially the variables that you need they're showing the project details if you set it to zero the panel will just never pop up validating at the mo at the moment it was ticked on so it's one if you make it zero it won't validate it and obviously you can then use a different project details name you have to use the full address dollar user and then whatever file name you want to be put into there so that's that's those three variables that you want if you want to change them uh, again it's better to do it in the environment configuration and those notes will be up on the 12d wiki page for you so that's how to turn the panel off let's get into edit the the details page. So we come under project management details editor. Now you can see the one again shipped from 12D is being read straight from the setups and the name of the file that 12D ships is project details.dtl. It's an XML file in the background but since I'm going to be customizing it I suggest what we do is we take all this information out and I write it and that will just write it into the project directory. So I'll now have, if I come into the project directory here, I now have a project details.dtl. And when I've finished editing this one, I'm going to move this one back into my dollar user directory so that 12D will find that when it starts a new project in the future. So the way these work, you can see here, these are the lists essentially and down the left hand side, all the settings. If you want to place a new one in, we can actually insert a new project detail or a new attribute essentially. If you don't want them anymore, we can delete them. If you want to change the list the way it is presented to the users, obviously we've got the blue buttons here and we can move them down the list or up the list if you want to as well. When you're finished, we can just hit set and write and that will then obviously update and replace the project details.dtl. Let's have a look at what's actually av available inside each of these. So these are all talking about project attributes. So when I do place a number in here, so I say it's 2020, and it might be the third job for the year. So I would set that 
That information can then be used and placed on all the drawing sheets. I can also place that information on all the strings if I wanted to, and, I'll, and later in the video I'll show you how to do that. But essentially by setting it there, what happens is 12D will save that information array under Project Details Attributes, and you can see here is where we've got their project details, the project number that I've added in, and there's the value that I've typed into the box. So it knows that it's a project number, it's text, and I've basically that's the number or the value that I've typed into the panel. And later on, I can use that value wherever I like. So these can also be used, these project attributes, because they are attributes or metadata, they could be used in macros or a whole lot of other features within 12D, chains and things like that, if you do know how to get to them and I'm going to get to, to that place later where I show you how that 12D calls these in. So editing them, it's fairly easily. We just place the text in there, project number. So this is the really important bit. That's the name, which is actually the attribute and it can't have a space in it. So you can see here where I've got the word project number. There's actually the display name, which actually comes up in the panel. You can give it a bit of a description if you want to. You can write a bit of a, a description in there so that if the 12D user hovers over the panel and doesn't know what to fill in, it will come up with a bit of information about what to fill in in that spot. And you can also put a default value in there. So things like the datum, if you're using the same datum all the time, you might just say, hey, look, the default value is going to be Australian height datum. And I could basically set that in, write that in so that every time that the user doesn't actually have to place a text in there themselves, and it would just become the default value. So that's what the default value is there. Optional is optional. So this little tick box basically means that the user doesn't have to fill in, in any of these options. And when 12D validates it, and that's what the validation tick box was before in the environment, it means that it doesn't have to validate it and it will be okay. And it's only optional. If you untick that, it means that the user must put an answer in the box there. So some of these you can see that are black here, and these are the ones that are shipped. There it is optional. Um, it's already got an answer in there for you. So, but what you might want to do is actually make sure that people do put in a, a project number or another one you might actually want to put in here is maybe a revision. So you don't want to have a revision space number because that can't actually be the attribute name. The attribute has to have no spaces and that's really important later on. The display name that will come up in the panel Maybe even the description is fine, but we could make it so it's not optional. Basically, it mandatory that this field must be set. So I'll write that and replace. Now to update my list here, because I'm, I'm just going to do it to reload it, I come to the load button and you can see the settings file at the moment. I'd have to go and find the file I want and remove the old details and get it to reload with the new answers. So if I do that, reload, and you can see there the revision number because I've said, hey, it's not optional, it's mandatory. It's now dark, it's black. So the user has to put something in there. Revision A it is. So that's what we do with the optional answer or mandatory. And that's how we can actually make sure that users do put an answer in the panel and that they do actually supply some information because we're going to need that later on, possibly for the drawing sheets or for the digital engineering side of things. So if I set that, that information is going to be stored away. Actually, I'll put the job number back, 2023, set that. And that's essentially how the project details can be set and you can customize this list to, to the, your needs or to your project. If it is your role or you are attempting to customize the project details, Two really important notes is obviously, as I suggested before, don't have a space in the project name or the, the attribute name there, because that will then cause other issues further on. The other one I really wanted to cover with you as well, are these bottom ones that are produced, provided automatically regarding the snippets and the components and the BIM pavement, they should be left in. Even if you're editing your file and you wish to delete most of the options that come out of the box from 12D, you can delete the list so that's actually quite small, but those bottom four should be kept in all circumstances really, because if we do remove those ones, 12D, the out of the box or the, the produced snippets from 12D, they will stop working. They won't work properly at all. The same with the components that are shipped for the designers as well. If we remove that option, that attribute, 12D and the components won't work also as expected by 12D. So definitely leave those four. It's a, it's a pretty big point to make that they need to be kept. You can adjust the lists for the other ones as much as you want to, but definitely keep those last four. 
when you're happy as I said write it out I've written to the local directory so that I would need to go and grab that file once I'm happy with it and move it into my dollar user directory wherever that's located starting a new project that panel would become well, sorry that list of details would become the default so that's how that's working so where are these project details used as I said the most common area where they're used is probably in the project drawing sheets or the drawing blocks title blocks so you can see here with a standard one from 12d which I've just read, read in down the bottom here where I've got project name project number these project details this piece of text here knows that it's going to get the project detail and the attribute was called project number you can see again there's no space there because it's calling on the attribute name okay I'll just go and show you that of the project number which is the name or the attribute that it's picking up so that's basically what will then get generated into that piece of text there and that will then come on the title sheet so you can see by making it a default it means the user must put something in there and it will then come out on your title block the other way that these can be used is obviously on your project to actually manipulate and put the attributes onto the string so we can move the project details from the project level down onto the strings themselves so let me just skip over to another project so just moving over to a design or an example of a design project here where I've got some design strings on the left there I already have set some project details up for this project and you can see those here but you might want to amend those put the project number in there and set those away and I might then want to move these project attributes the details there down onto each of the individual design strings themselves and that is done using the utilities attributes and using an attribute manipulator file these attribute manipulator files can be set up and, and saved away into the user library so for your company's library and then they can be applied on every job so long as these project details are going to be the same and they should be for most of your projects if it's matching your title sheet so first of all to create an attribute manipulator file we just need to put a file name in there project details maybe to 12d objects and then essentially I need to place some rules in here so I just click on the plus button there and I can then identify the rules now the rule essentially is to take the property or the project attribute and then to place that onto or modify it onto each of the individual strings so that's how those two parts of them work if I came over to the project you could see here what the attributes are that I'd need to type in I would need to type in this whole path project details project number and then the value itself so I'd actually have to put the project details number and the value to actually find that correct value or that piece of text or that attribute there now it's quite hard you would have to get all the caps lock right and the forward slashes right what's much easier to do is actually to come over and actually pick those attributes to use and this can be used to pick other attributes off strings off models but I'm actually going for the project attributes so I select those I'm definitely interested in the project details I'm after the project number and I want the value itself the value that the user would have placed in there now if you do want other ones at the same time we can tick on more options here and the more tick boxes we turn on the more rules that will be generated for us automatically so if I went and said let's go and grab the surveyor's name and also the designer's name now you can see the problem I've got here is that there's actually no value for the surveyor's name so it's actually coming up with blank because the project I'm in doesn't have any examples so it's actually not coming up with the right option that would mean if I did try to apply it it actually wouldn't actually have a value in that box there so we do need to be a bit careful when we're actually creating these for the first time so let me just keep it really simple and just use the project number itself if I set that you can see it's placed that forward slash option in there to go right down to that level of finding the value from our project attributes and now I want to place that onto my string so I come down drop down and place that onto my string attributes what's the attribute name I want to call it well I'm going to call it PRO number and that's essentially all I need to do I can write that in there now and that's my rule that I want written the file save that and finish that and now I need to apply that attribute manipulator file so the idea with this attribute manipulator is that I'd create the file once um, it would then go and live in my user library so I'd move this file from the project into the user library itself and then I can use it for each project whenever I need it essentially it'd be all set up because it would be pulling in the same project details so I pick my attribute manipulator file that I want to apply what's the data do I want to apply that on to move the attributes around well again I haven't just got one model here I've got quite a number so I'm actually going to use the model list 
you might have seen this one before, but if it's blank, you can actually come up to the top, do a right mouse button, and actually populate the models directly from the view. So rather than actually filling them out individually, I can actually say, give me the design view, and it will then populate that list for me automatically. And I don't need to go and select each of them individually. It's just a bit of a, a cheat and, and filling out the list there. So these are the models I want to apply it to. That's the attribute manipulator file. And I'm just essentially going to override the file. Oh, sorry, override the strings, replace the existing data. So if I have a look at it at the moment, F8, pick the strings, pick any of the strings here. They've got some project attributes on there about the apply MTF and the details that were produced through that. But really when I apply it again, it'll go through and actually add this extra attribute on. Click any of the strings again, and there's my project number with the details that I actually placed into the project details panel. And that's how we can move the project details down onto the strings, getting it ready to be read out to our digital engineering model. I hope this video has helped. If you've got any other questions about the project details or any other parts of 12D, please drop us a line at the support. We're happy to help. And if you've got any suggestions or tips, we'd love to hear from you. Have a great day. Thanks.